Hello, dear friends. A very good morning, a very good dawn, and may the Holy Spirit meet your needs. And I believe that the greatest need is to have your understanding enlightened. For as long as there is no understanding of the will of God for your life, you won't be able to, to see you will walk blindly and in darkness. Anyway, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He enlightens our understanding and allows us to see where we have to, to fix things and go right, where we have to make the right decisions, what we need to do. It's the Holy Spirit who guides us. Without Him, it's not possible for a person to have direction for their life. Anyway, we've been speaking about the injustices that promote those who are persecuted, the injustices which promote those who are persecuted. Perhaps this sounds a bit complicated, but you will understand it in a bit. Pay attention. Jesus said clearly, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For righteousness' sake. Not because of unrighteousness. If you do what is wrong, if we do anything wrong, and we are persecuted because of that. And we are, let's say, placed behind bars. Then this is fair. But when you walk in righteousness, you do what is right and you live a life of integrity based upon the word of God. You live your faith. You don't do evil to anyone. On the opposite, you are someone who tries to help others. And then you suffer, you know, you are reviled, you are persecuted, you are hated, you, you are lied about and defamed, right? So you suffer because of righteousness, because you live a righteous, clean life. Then, yes, you can consider yourself happy and a member of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. That's what he says here. Blessed, meaning happy, are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you. He says again, blessed are you when they revile they lie, they say lies about you, they persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. So if you embrace your faith in me and you follow my footsteps and you walk in righteousness, you obey my word, you are persecuted. You are persecuted for my sake, so you are blessed. And then he concludes saying, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah. Great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. All of them were persecuted, all the prophets. You can see, for example, uh, John the Baptist, right? He would only preach about repentance. He didn't do evil to anybody. He lived in the desert. He lived a simple, poor lifestyle confined to the desert. And even still, what happened to John the Baptist? He was arrested and beheaded, meaning he was condemned and killed, killed, because of righteousness' sake, so he's blessed. 
Pay attention. We have the case of Job as well, who was a very rich man, very happy, with a wonderful family. He was the richest man from the East. He had a very strong health. He was a perfect person. And the Bible says that he was blameless, upright, God-fearing, and that shunned evil. So, Job was a perfect man. However, when Satan came before God and God allowed that to happen, he, God said to Satan, Have you seen my servant Job, a blameless, upright, God-fearing man and who shuns evil? So, Satan said to God, Oh, he is like these because you've blessed him in everything. He is the wealthiest man in the East. He's healthy. He has a wonderful family, ten children and daughters. And Then God said to him, Very well, what he has is in your hands now. What he has is in your hands. Just don't touch his life. So Satan left God's presence and in one day killed all of his children, took everything away from him. He lost everything, and he became nothing. He had a piece of clay in his hand. But still, Job did not curse God. He did not lament. He did not curse God. He didn't try to commit suicide. Nothing like that. He just said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will be back. So praised be the Lord. He did not sin against God. And then once again, Satan came back to God's presence, and God said, Do you see? You incited me against Job, but he kept his integrity, his fear. He kept his righteousness in me. And then Satan said, well, he, he still keeps his faith in you because he's healthy. And everything that a man has, everything a man has, he will give for his soul, for his life. Touch his body and see if he will not curse you. Then God said, look, you can touch his body, but you cannot take his life. You cannot take his life. So Satan left God's presence once again, went there and touched Job's body, and he became ill from the top of his head to the tip of his toes. I would say he had leprosy all over his body. We assume that. And he lost everything. He didn't lose his wife, though. Only she was left. Anyway, Job still did not curse God. His wife said, Curse your God and die. Die at once, because it's better to die than to live this way. But Job rebuked his wife and said, You speak like a foolish woman. You speak like a foolish woman. And then Job spent a period of time, a long period of time of his life, he was groaning, suffering with pain, suffering terrible pains. The holy text says that Job's breath was unbearable. It was unbearable. Only the breath, imagine the rest. Anyway, to conclude then, God allowed Job to, to become suffering itself. He lost ten children the same day, lost all of his wealth, his good health. He lost everything, everything. And the three friends he had were bad friends because they came to add up to Job's suffering, 
accusing him that he was suffering because he might have done something wrong against God. However, at the end, when that period of injustice ended, after he suffered everything, then God restored all to Job and gave him twice as much of what he had. If he was rich, he became twice as rich, the richest man, twice as much in the East. His health was restored. He once again had children. He had ten children again. His life was totally restored. But then, what was the great, the great achievement of Job? It wasn't the family, it wasn't good health or money, nothing like that. It was that Job believed in God just because of the information he had. He was a man who feared God and he was a priest, but he didn't know God. He didn't know God. But finally, he got to the point of even confessing, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. I have information about you. But now, now my eye sees you. He had an encounter with God. Job feared God because he had information about God. But now Job was a man who knew God. He knew God. And God allowed everything that he went through for this exact reason, for Job to know God. And that's what God does as well with people nowadays, those who come to Him. You can even see, I doubt that anyone have had access to Jesus in a good time without suffering. I, I doubt that anybody has been revealed by Jesus without having gone through the valley of the shadow of death. I doubt. You who are watching me and you've had an encounter with God, you suffered first, didn't you? Very well. Today you know him. Why? Because you suffered persecution or problems. By any reason you suffered. For example, in my case, I suffered a lot of persecution, a lot of injustices. However, finally, I got to know my father. Finally, I had access to him and to his presence. So this only happens after the person is wrongly persecuted. So this is the prize of those who are truly wronged. They've had access to God. They had an encounter with him. And when you hear of people who didn't accept being persecuted. Oh, I embraced righteousness. I embraced my faith in God. I was doing well in church, but then I was persecuted. I remember someone whom I, I got to know that they said, Oh, I was very faithful in the church. I was doing everything well, correctly. But one day the pastor walked by me and didn't even greet me. Oh, I became very hurt. Look at that, just because the pastor didn't greet them, they didn't realize that the pastor perhaps was thinking of the problems that he had to face or that he had to resolve in order to help people. They only thought of their own case, their own situation. Oh, he walked by, by me, he didn't greet me, he didn't even look at me. So I left the church and lost my faith. Meaning, these are people that when they don't know the divine righteousness, they won't be persecuted. They will be persecuted due to their own mistakes. Actually, they won't be persecuted because if we make a mistake, 
and we reap the fruit of that mistake, we are not being persecuted. Yes or no? That's justice. If a person robs and goes to jail, then they are not being persecuted. They are just reaping the fruit. But when a person, or for the person to be persecuted, first they have to be righteous. And to be righteous, they have to know Jesus. They have to know Jesus. Only Jesus justifies a person through faith. So, in order for a person to be righteous, they have to know Jesus. And righteousness, living in righteousness, they will suffer the injustices. Why? Because those who are righteous, they are the ones who suffer persecution. Those who are not righteous are not persecuted. They suffer the consequences of their mistakes, but not of their righteousness. So when a person believes in the Lord Jesus, they give their life to the Lord Jesus. When a person lives a life based upon the Word of God, they are living in righteousness. Then, yes, comes hatred, evil speaking, the persecutions. And Jesus said that blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake, not because of the fact they did something wrong. No, but because they were righteous and they were persecuted. They were reviled and persecuted. They lied about them. They hated them without a cause. They hated because of envy, for example. So they were wronged because of the righteous life they lived, because of Jesus, because of the name of Jesus. It's what he says here. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, not because of unrighteousness and sin, for example. It's not because of sin. It's because of the fact that the person is immune or, let's say, innocent and without sin, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile, meaning they revile, they defame you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. It's for my sake. It's not for your sake, for your own cause, or because of your family members, your loved ones, or because of your denomination. No, it's for the cause, for the sake of Jesus. And then he says, he adds up, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah. Great is your reward. Jesus didn't even have to say that great is the reward, because the reward is already great. It is called reward after all. But when he says great reward, it's because it's something unimaginable. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Job was persecuted. Every other man of God was persecuted and defamed. John the Baptist was arrested and beheaded because of righteousness, because he spoke the truth. So this, this happens. Jesus was persecuted. He was an example of persecution because he was perfect. You can say that the prophets may have sinned. The other men who were persecuted, they may have made a mistake. But Jesus didn't make any mistake. He was perfect. And still, he was bruised because of our sins. He took upon himself all of our sins. He was righteous and took upon himself our flaws and mistakes and guilt 
and he became sin itself so that he could save me and you. So no one more than Jesus suffered because of righteousness, meaning the righteous one suffered because of the persecution. He suffered the persecutions because of the fact that he was righteous. Therefore, dear friends, the psalmist says like this, it was good for me to have been afflicted so that I could know your laws. It wasn't the case of Jesus. Jesus already knew. Jesus came from God. Jesus was the Word that became flesh. But all of us have had an experience with God because of the persecutions, injustices we suffered, or because of our flaws and mistakes, our, our sins. But due to a sincere heart, God had compassion and saw our suffering and revealed himself and saved us, delivered us. Therefore, dear friend, praise God when we are afflicted and persecuted. When people say, oh, Bishop is a thief, he takes advantage of people, he's a false prophet, the Antichrist, and this and that. I just laugh. I get into a state of rejoicing and, and being glad because the prophecy spoken by Jesus is being fulfilled in my life. And the more they speak evil of me, the more they hate me, the more I rejoice, the more I get glad. So people say, are you, are you not going to defend yourself, Bishop? No, how can I? Because if I do, I will lose the joy. I will lose the glory. I will no longer rejoice if I defend myself. If I defend myself, I will trust in my own justice, and then I will lose. But if I trust in God's justice, I will gain, and I will continue rejoicing. No problem. They can speak whatever they want. They can speak. They can throw stones. They can hate me. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Because the more stones they throw, the stronger our castle becomes. It is fortified even more. The stones are used to build castles. Therefore, dear friends, if you are persecuted, wronged, harmed at your workplace, in church, in your family, in your relationship with your family members, if you are someone who is dedicated to your husband or to your wife, but he or, or, or she hates you because of that, they cheat on you, they do wrong things because you are like this, then praise God, because God is sanctified in your life. God is glorified in your life. He is not glorified if you defend yourself and want to do justice with your own hands. Then He won't be able to help you. But if you trust Him, if you trust in His justice, then you can be sure that He won't fail you. He won't fail. He never failed and will never fail. That's how I've been living my faith, and from faith to faith. And that's why Jesus says there that to he who overcomes, only to he who overcomes, they will have the right to the benefits of the kingdom of heaven, even to sit with him on the throne. But the overcomer, is the one who allows himself to be carried away and, and to be, you know, wronged because of his righteousness, because he's being persecuted. He's being persecuted, he's being harmed because he's defamed wrongly. Praise God. Praise God. 
for the injustices that those who are of God go through because these persecutions and injustices is what make us rejoice and be exceedingly glad because it's what's written here rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven hallelujah do you believe in this amen if you don't believe then there's nothing you can do nothing those who believe it will receive it those who don't will defend themselves and fight back and and cause confusion and so on and they will lose it they may gain here on earth but they will lose in eternity may god bless you all and i'll see you tomorrow we are going to be continue tomorrow talking about this subject because i've seen that many people have been losing their salvation have been going to hell because they want to impose their own righteousness and they avoid suffering or being persecuted because of the Lord Jesus because of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ many people are going to hell because of that and now we already know take care of your soul obey the word it's here Jesus said nine times blessed are you blessed are you but two times out of these nine the two last times he speaks of being blessed to those who are being persecuted which is the prize right it's the prize for those who are of God I see you tomorrow and may God bless you